Start with the name of Allah, who is kind and merciful. Hi friends. You are watching my YouTube channel Al Marwa, friends. In my previous video, I told you about Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia is the world's oldest civilization, and today I will tell you about the Etruscan civilization. So guys you should be watching the full video. And if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, then subscribe my YouTube channel and click the bell icon for further videos. Friends, the Etruscan civilization was a civilization of ancient Italy whose territory covered roughly what is now Tuscany, Western Umbria, and Northern Lazio, as well as parts of what are now the Po Valley, Emilia Romagna, Southeastern Lombardy, Southern Veneto, and Campania. The earliest evidence of a culture that is identifiably Etruscan dates from about 900 BC. This is the period of the Iron Age Villanovan culture, considered to be the earliest phase of Etruscan civilization, which itself developed from the previous Late Bronze Age Proto-Villanovan culture in the same region. Etruscan civilization endured until it was assimilated into Roman society. Assimilation began in the late 4th century BC as a result of the Roman-Etruscan wars It accelerated with the grant of Roman citizenship in 90 BC, and became complete in 27 BC, when the Etruscans' territory was incorporated into the newly established Roman Empire. Friends, the Etruscan civilization is the name given today to the culture and way of life of a people of ancient Italy, whom ancient Romans called Etruscan or Tusi, ancient Greeks called Tyrnoi or Tyrsinoi, and who called themselves Rosina, syncopated to Rasna or Rasna. As distinguished by its own language, the civilization endured from an unknown prehistoric time prior to the foundation of Rome until its complete assimilation to ancient Rome and the Roman Republic. Numerous vestiges of Etruscan culture to survive the Roman conquest. At its maximum extent during the foundation period of Rome and the Roman Kingdom, it flourished in three confederacies, of Etruria, of the Po Valley and Latium and of Campania. Rome was sited in Etruscan territory. There is considerable evidence that early Rome was dominated by Etruscans until the Romans sacked Vei in 396 BC. The Etruscan civilization comprised a group of diverse city-states. The Etruscans had no centralized system of government, but were organized into confederacies or leagues that convened annual meetings. Individual city-states were governed independently by kings, but political power lay in the hands of the powerful landowning aristocracy. The Etruscans had no centralized system of government. However, the city-states were organized into leagues, of which there were three. Ancient sources refer to a league of 12 peoples, which met annually at the Phanum Voltumni shrine of Voltumna, the Etruscans' main sanctuary, near the city of Volsini. Each city-state sent representatives to the meetings, which were largely religious in nature, but also included some political business, as well as athletic games and affair. The representatives annually elected one of their members to serve as leader. This office was likely concerned with religious and organizational matters. Individual city-states were governed independently by kings who served as the head of state, commander-in-chief, high priest, and judge. However, these kings were neither hereditary monarchs nor absolute rulers. Rather, real political power was in the hands of the powerful landowning aristocracy. Friends, it is difficult to form a definitive history of the Etruscans. They did not develop a literature of their own, and almost no written records have survived. Much of what is known about them comes from ancient Greek and Roman authors. Even though the Greek writer Herodotus 484 C, 429 BC, speculated that the Etruscans had originated in Asia Minor, some archaeological evidence suggests they were indigenous to Italy. The Villanovan culture of the 8th and 9th centuries BC is believed to have been an early Etruscan civilization, and a distinct Etruscan culture was evident by 800 BC. The Etruscans expanded rapidly during the 7th century BC and peaked in the 6th century, at which time they had the most powerful civilization in pre-Roman Italy. Much of the region's wealth and power derived from its vast resources of copper, iron, and other metal ores, and the Etruscans became known for their metalworking. They were also known as a great maritime power. Indeed, they had a reputation as pirates throughout the Mediterranean. There is evidence that Rome was founded by Etruscans, and they occupied Rome during the latter part of its regal period, from 616 to 510 BC. The legendary Tarquin kings of Rome were of Etruscan origin. In 510 BC, however, the last Etruscan monarch was expelled from Rome, marking the end of Etruscan dominance in the region and the ascendance of the Roman Republic. 
By the end of the 4th century BC, Rome controlled all of Italy. According to Roman legend, the Tarquin dynasty from the Etruscan coastal city of Tarquini ruled Rome from 616 until 510 BC, when the last monarch was expelled. The Etruscan aristocracy, which comprised wealthy families of noble descent and prominent merchants and landowners, held the keys to power in the Etruscan city-states. Craftsmen, merchants, and seamen formed a middle class. The period from 620 to 500 BC marked the height of the Etruscans' power. During this time, their empire spread from the Po River Valley in the north to Campania, present-day Naples, in the south. The end of the 6th century BC, however, marked the decline of the Etruscan civilization. The Etruscans were driven out of south-central Italy by a coalition of Greeks, Latins, and Samnites, and their influence was limited to the northern parts of the Tyrrhenian Sea as a result of the Battle of Alalia between 540 and 535 BC against Carthage. The last Etruscan monarch, Lucius Tarquinius Superbus D, after 510 BC, was expelled from Rome in 510 BC. The Etruscans suffered a crushing naval defeat off the coast of Cumae in 474 BC, and by the next century they had been driven out of Corsica and Elba and defeated by the Gauls. Friends, the Etruscan civilization is recognized for its great influence on later Roman culture and political organization. Roman styles of architecture, such as the arch and vault, were modeled on Etruscan buildings, and the Romans borrowed the Etruscan alphabet. Politically, it is believed that the Roman Senate originally served as an advisory body to the Etruscan kings of Rome. The Etruscan symbol of authority, the fasces, a bundle of rods and an axe, was later appropriated by the Roman consuls. Friends, the Etruscans, like the contemporary cultures of ancient Greece and ancient Rome, had a significant military tradition. In addition to marking the rank and power of certain individuals, warfare was a considerable economic advantage to Etruscan civilization. Like many ancient societies, the Etruscans conducted campaigns during summer months, raiding neighboring areas, attempting to gain territory and combating piracy as a means of acquiring valuable resources, such as land, prestige, goods, and slaves. It is likely that individuals taken in battle would be ransomed back to their families and clans at high cost. Prisoners could also potentially be sacrificed on tombs as an honor to fallen leaders of Etruscan society, not unlike the sacrifices made by Achilles for Patrocles. Friends, the Etruscan system of belief was an imminent polytheism. That is, all visible phenomena were considered to be a manifestation of divine power and that power was subdivided into deities that acted continually on the world of man and could be dissuaded or persuaded in favor of human affairs. How to understand the will of deities, and how to behave, had been revealed to the Etruscans by two initiators, Tages, a childlike figure born from tilled land and immediately gifted with prescience, and Vigoya, a female figure. Their teachings were kept in a series of sacred books. Three layers of deities are evident in the extensive Etruscan art motifs. One appears to be divinities of an indigenous nature, Katha and Usul, the sun, Tiber, the moon, Salvins, a civil god, Tyrin, the goddess of love, Laren, the god of war, Lanth, the goddess of death, Maris, Thalna, Terms, and the ever popular Fufluns, whose name is related in some way to the city of Populonia and the populous Romanus possibly, the god of the people. Ruling over this pantheon of lesser deities were higher ones that seemed to reflect the Indo-European system, Tinertinia, the sky, Uni his wife, Juno, and Sel, the earth goddess. In addition, some Greek and Roman gods were taken into the Etruscan system, Artemis, Artemis, Minerva, Minerva, Pacha, Dionysus. The Greek heroes taken from Homer also appear extensively in art motifs. Friends. Relatively little is known about the architecture of the ancient Etruscans. They adapted the native Italic styles with influence from the external appearance of Greek architecture. In turn, ancient Roman architecture began with Etruscan styles, and then accepted still further Greek influence. Roman temples show many of the same differences in form to Greek ones and Etruscan temples do, but like the Greeks, use stone, in which they closely copy Greek conventions. Friends. The houses of the wealthy were evidently often large and comfortable, but the burial chambers of tombs, often filled with grave goods, are the nearest approach to them to survive. In the southern Etruscan area, 
tombs have large rock-cut chambers under a tumulus and large necropolis, and these, together with some city walls, are the only Etruscan constructions to survive. In the southern Etruscan area, tombs have large rock-cut chambers under a tumulus and large necropolis, and these, together with some city walls, are the only Etruscan constructions to survive. Etruscan architecture is not generally considered as part of the body of Greco-Roman classical architecture. Friends, Etruscan art was produced by the Etruscan civilization between the 9th and 2nd centuries BC. Particularly strong in this tradition were figurative sculpture and terracotta, particularly lithicized on sarcophagi or temples, wall painting and metalworking, especially engraved bronze mirrors. Etruscan sculpture and cast bronze was famous and widely exported. But few large examples have survived, the material was too valuable, and recycled later. In contrast to terracotta and bronze, there was apparently little Etruscan sculpture in stone, despite the Etruscans controlling fine sources of marble, including Carrara marble, which seems not to have been exploited until the Romans. Most surviving Etruscan art comes from tombs, including all the fresco wall paintings, which show scenes of feasting and some narrative mythological subjects. Bakiro wares in black were the early and native styles of fine Etruscan pottery. Friends, there was also a tradition of elaborate Etruscan vase painting, which sprung from its Greek equivalent. The Etruscans were the main export market for Greek vases. Etruscan temples were heavily decorated with colorfully painted terracotta antifixes and other fittings, which survive in large numbers, where the wooden superstructure has vanished. Etruscan art was strongly connected to religion. The afterlife was of major importance in Etruscan art. Friends, the Etruscan musical instruments seen in frescoes and bar reliefs are different types of pipes, such as the plagios, the pipes of pan or syrinx, the alabaster pipe, and the famous double pipes, accompanied on percussion instruments such as the tintinabulum, tympanum and crotals, and later by stringed instruments like the lyre and kithara. Friends, Etruscan texts written in a space of seven centuries, use a form of the Greek alphabet due to close contact between the Etruscans and the Greek colonies at Pithecusi and Cumae in the 8th century BC until it was no longer used, at the beginning of the 1st century AD. Friends, Etruscan inscriptions disappeared from Chiasi, Perugia and Arezzo around this time. Only a few fragments survive, religious and especially funeral texts most of which are late from the 4th century BC. In addition to the original texts that have survived to this day, we have a large number of quotations and allusions from classical authors. In the 1st century BC, Diodorus Siculus wrote that literary culture was one of the great achievements of the Etruscans. Little is known of it and even what is known of their language is due to the repetition of the same few words in the many inscriptions found by way of the modern epitaphs, contrasted in bilingual or trilingual texts with Latin and Punic. Out of the aforementioned genres, is just one such Volnio Volnius, cited in classical sources mentioned. Friends, with a few exceptions, such as the Liber Lentus, the only written records in the Etruscan language that remain are inscriptions, mainly funerary. The language is written in the Etruscan alphabet, a script related to the early Yuban Greek alphabet. Many thousand inscriptions in Etruscan are known, mostly epitaphs, and a few very short texts have survived which are mainly religious. European civilization, although its presence has been hidden and its voice silent. Etruscan imaginative literature is evidenced only in references by later Roman authors, but it is evident from their visual art that the Greek myths were well known. Etruscans left around 13,000 inscriptions which have been found so far, only a small minority of which are of significant length. Attested from 700 BC to AD 50, the relation of Etruscan to other languages has been a source of long-running speculation and study. Friends, the Etruscans are believed to have spoken a pre-Indo-European language, and the majority consensus is that Etruscan is related only to other members of what is called the Tarsinian language family, which in itself is an isolate family, that is, unrelated directly to other known language groups. Since Rix, 1998, it is widely accepted that the Tarsinian family groups Redic and Lemnian are related to Etruscan. The Etruscans achieved a high level of social and political organization, and of material and artistic culture. However, Etruria is often referred to as a lost civilization, because apart from reconstructing the archaeological record, what we know about this culture comes from outside sources, from Greek or Roman writers. Friends. 
it appears that the Roman writers may have been guilty of revisionism. Their version of Roman history was a romantic one in which Rome was the new Troy, or founded by the sons of the god of war, the twins Romulus and Remus. Greeks saw them as an immoral people, and tended to depict them in negative light. However, Etruscan art's influence could be traced in the work of Michelangelo. Friends, Etruscan religious ritual and worship also influenced Rome's, and through Roman control of the Christian church after Constantine the Great some have traced its influence to Christian investments. There is a theory that Christians were responsible for burning Etruscan books in the 4th century. If this is true, it is unknown what their motive was. This was a period when any alternative to the now officially sanctioned orthodoxy of the Nicene Creed 325 was destroyed. Many Gnostic and other Gospels were destroyed, although some survived hidden safely until rediscovered in the 20th century. Friends, it could have been that this literature represented the old religion, or paganism, which was associated with the devil. Arnobius, the Christian apologist who died in about 330 CE, is said to have called Etruria the mother of all superstitions. There is little doubt, though, that the Etruscans did found Rome, or that almost all of their material culture was adopted by the Romans, just as they adopted Greek culture. The Romans were perhaps less inventive than they were excellent administrators and legal theorists. Rome's influence on the world lives on, through law, through administrative divisions of Europe, through cities founded by her empire governmental systems, languages derived from Latin, even in the landscape and roads of Europe and the Middle East. Etruscan culture, absorbed by Rome, has also contributed to the development of European civilization, although its presence has been hidden and its voice silent. The Greek heroes taken from Homer also appear extensively in art motifs. Friends, the Etruscans believed in intimate contact with divinity. They did nothing without proper consultation with the gods and signs from them. These practices, which we would view as superstition, were taken over in total by the Romans. A god was called in Ais, later Ais, which in the plural is Aesar. Where they were was a Fani or Luth, a sacred place, such as a Favi, a grave or temple. There you needed to make a Fleur, plural Flerchva, offering. Friends, around the Munner Muni, the tombs, were the Manor Mani, Latin Manes, the souls of the ancestors. A deceased person travels to the underworld called Aita Hades and thus may be referred to as a Hintial, literally, one who is underneath. A special magistrate, the case, looked after the Seca, or Wrath, sacred things. Every man, however, had his religious responsibilities, which were expressed in Analum Methrisli Caches, a sacred society. No public event was conducted without the Netsvis, the Hruspex, or his female equivalent, the Netsra. They read the bumps on the liver of a properly sacrificed sheep. We have a model of a liver made of bronze, whose religious significance is still a matter of heated debate, marked into sections that perhaps are meant to explain what the bump in that region should mean. Divination through Herospices is a tradition originating from the Fertile Crescent. Friends, like the Egyptians, the Etruscans believed in eternal life, but prosperity there was linked to funereal prosperity here. The tombs in many cases were better than many houses, with spacious chambers, while frescoes and grave furniture. Friends, most Etruscan tombs have been plundered. In the tomb, especially on the sarcophagus, was a representation of the dead person in his or her prime, probably as they wanted to be in the hereafter. Some of the statuary is the finest and most realistic of any. We have no problem visualizing the appearance of the Etruscans. They wanted us to see them smiling and intimate with their kith and kin around them, as we do. The Etruscans were in many ways the predecessors of the Romans. Friends, the Etruscans taught the Romans both engineering and building skills. They also decisively influenced the classical Roman architectural style. They also developed the economy of the city, for instance by draining the marshes adjacent to Rome. The Etruscans were a formative influence on Rome, and this can be seen in its religion, culture, urban planning and engineering, and they also helped to establish it as a great city and one of the greatest powers in Italy. Friends here I like to tell you quote by George Bancroft about civilizations that the exact measure of the progress of civilization is the degree in which the intelligence of the common mind has prevailed over wealth and brute force. Hopefully you liked my video about Etruscans. Let us know if you have any suggestions or question about Mesopotamia civilization. And if you haven't subscribed my YouTube channel yet, then subscribe my channel and click the bell icon for further videos.
Thank you for watching my channel.